everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Starbucks. If you watch my vlog this weekend you'll know why. Today we are talking about how to stay focused slash motivated during lockdown. I know a lot of people are working from home right now. Um, I know I am. Especially my fellow friends who are trying so desperately hard to pass fourth year. Ugh. Whether this is because you are, you know, working from home for your employer or you're working from home for university or you're just wanting to try and maintain some kind of level of normality, this is just some things I've been doing to help me stay in the zone and not binge watch Netflix for six, seven days in a row. The lighting is being a little bit dramatic today. Is that better? I'm sorry if the lighting's no different from the intro. I just, ugh. So I'm filming in my brother's room, he's moved out, but I just like building like a little set behind me and the lighting in this room is just so damn good. So that's why I have such a nice backdrop today is because this is staged. <laughs> Anywho, let's just stop talking about my backdrop and let's dive into the video. If you're like me and I'm gonna be talking from my perspective because of course I know my situation better than yours, I am trying to finish fourth year. There's a lot of things that need to be done from various projects that need to be finished off to admin tasks and just general a lot of things. <laughs> the best way to organize this is to-do lists. I know, everyone loves a good to-do list, especially me. But finding the right to-do list for you can be tricky. I've seen people use bullet journals. I've tried that, it hasn't worked for me. I've seen people use just their notes on their phone, which personally does work for me. I've also seen people, and like myself, just writing in notebooks. Focus on me, not Nathan. <sighs> this is a mistake having Nathan in the phone, in the shop. There we go. <laughs> That's Nathan, by the way, from Hard Grind, the print from Interim Show. Anywho, this is my notebook. It's from Made Brave from when I was at GDFS, and they kindly gave everyone who was in their group a notebook. It's a moleskin, letchum, letchum, let. I can't pronounce the name, that seems to be a running theme with me, but it's a grid one. Ooh, this is my goals for 2020. Ooh, we're not gonna look at that, that could be in a video for another day. Sorry, I never looked at the front page before, but I usually write in massive lists in this notebook and slowly go through them. But it's just a good way of getting what's in your head out and onto paper. But sometimes using a notebook can be annoying because I have to almost rewrite the list all the set time. Like nearly every single page is titled things I want to do this week because there's always things I want to do that week. Annotate and stick in 60 pages of research, cry. <laughs> oh wow, that looked like a bad week. Yeah, there's loads of to-dos and I usually keep this beside me so when I'm working, I can jot down things I need to do. So maybe if I'm in the middle of doing an edit and I need something for the next part of the video, like, oh, I need to go grab an image of this, I'll jot it down in my book so that I don't have to memorize it. I can come back to it and I know that's what I need to do next for that task. So that's usually what I use my notebook for or if I'm taking notes in a meeting just so that I'm not typing and it coming through as like feedback or on like a call. It's just, it's good to have a physical notebook. However, lately I found that using the notes on my laptop is so much easier because I have a MacBook, it syncs with my phone and my iPad and I always have one of those three things with me. Like when I was in the bath the other night and I was wanting to write down things I was thinking in my head, Kind of illogical to have a notebook with me because I'm in a bath, but my phone, that's also illogical, but I'm like, mm, it's fine. I could type the things I was thinking about and needing to do and it was synced to my laptop. So when I came back to my laptop, I had those notes on screen to look at. So keeping your to-do list near you and in sight is a great idea. I did try the post-it note method, which is what I've seen so many of my friends doing, and it just wasn't working for me. Um, I just had really shit post-it notes, <laughs> but I wrote down everything I had to do, and then I ran out of post-it notes, and then all the post-it notes fell off the wall. So, <laughs> doesn't necessarily work for me. I find it quite wasteful, because I've got to write down everything I have to do. If I just type it all out, it's a little bit easier, and I feel like it's less wasteful than post-it notes. But of course, it's up to you if you prefer sticking them on the wall so it's there every morning you wake up, go you. But I usually have my phone on me so I can see my to-do list at all times. My current to-do list is like my big uni to-do list and I've broken it down into days. So everything I'm thinking about, I'm like, right, let's schedule some of those things for separate days. 
because I know I have a schedule for filming, I try and work my uni projects around when I'm going to be filming and editing so that I'm still giving enough time for my YouTube work and my uni work. You really need to prioritise what's the most important and make sure you're giving yourself enough time for each task. My YouTube work is just as important as my uni work so I make sure that they're both getting equal attention and I'm giving separate days for those things. I typically know how long a video edit is going to take me so I know how much time to schedule for that. But if there's certain tasks you don't know how long they're going to take, give yourself more time than you would have thought. Maybe a whole day because if you get that project done quicker than you would have thought, you can then use that time to work on other things you had scheduled later on in the week. But also, if you then go into time that you were meant to use for other projects, you're now eating into other time that needs to be spent elsewhere. Just be organised with your to-do lists. Try not overburden yourself with things to do, because as soon as you start doing that, you start feeling bad, you start regressing and stressing, and it's just... It ain't a good place to be in, hun. I've been there too many times and I'm still doing it today and I don't know why I'm giving this advice if I can't take my own. So, to-do lists are essential. Do them however you wish. But to make sure that you do them, to motivate you to do them, I use an app called Focus Keeper. Now, you might have heard me speaking about this in last week's vlog and I completely butchered the name like 20 times. It's the Pomodoro Technique where you spend 25 minutes solidly working and then take a five minute break. I have found when using that app, or something similar to that equivalent, I have been so much more productive in those sessions. It's also really good to be tracking how long you're spending doing certain things because then for the future, you can kind of know, okay, so it took me two focus sessions to get that annotation done. So when you're scheduling in further things for you to do, you know it takes you about an hour to annotate maybe 20 pages. It's worth noting as well that it's four sessions of 25 minute blocks and then after your four sessions you get a long break and then you go back to the four sessions with smaller breaks so that you're not constantly working with just five minute breaks. I try and make sure that those like 25 minute half hour breaks I take are usually when I have lunch so that I kind of just separates the day a bit more. Also in those five minute breaks it's super important to get up and move about. I usually like to get up, go make myself a coffee, kind of re-energize myself, drink a glass of water. Sometimes if I'm feeling really stiff, I'll actually like YouTube a five minute hit session or a five minute yoga session just so that I'm moving and getting some like flexibility into my soul. <laughs> that being said, exercise is a super good motivator. I know not everyone likes exercise. I especially don't like exercise. I tried running um, maybe like last month and ugh, I'm not a graceful runner. <laughs> so I gave that up. And now I'm going skateboarding with Mark, which is actually really fun. So an exercise that you find quite fun kind of gives you something to look forward to. So if I've got all my work done for the day and I feel like I've achieved everything I needed to that day, I kind of reward myself with going out for a skate or I save the skate for a day that I know that I can fully enjoy myself. So like the weekend. Taking care of your body and mind is super important if you want to stay on track and get all these things done. So that is why meditation has become part of my daily routine. So I actually used the first session of my Focus Keeper as a meditation session. So for 25 minutes, I will sit solidly listening to some meditation music and focusing on my breath. Meditation does take time to kind of get used to. Having that time in the morning to just focus on my breath and not think about the things I need to do that day is really important. Of course, when I'm meditating, I do have these thoughts slip into my head, like what I'm gonna do today, what I'm gonna eat, should I do this, oh, this needs done, da 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 da. So I kind of just go, cool, I had that thought, I'll put a pin in it, I'll remember if it's important, back to the breath. And that happens quite a few times throughout the session. Some sessions, I barely have any other thoughts, I'm quite happy sitting there focusing on my breath. Other sessions, I can't wait to just get started with my day, because there's so much to do, and yeah, it's, it's striking that balance. The reason I do it first thing in the morning is because that my mind hasn't already started thinking of all the things I'm doing. If I was to do it in the middle of the day, I think I'd already be thinking about all the things I'd done and all the things that still need to be done. Whereas first thing in the morning, I'm still kind of like getting up, getting ready, and it's now in my morning routine. My day starts after my meditation, which is really good. Some other things that help me feel motivated is listening to things that inspire me, like podcasts or webinars. Attending those kind of make me feel like I want to do more and achieve more, so I am motivated to keep working. Sometimes they can have the reverse effect and make me feel like I'm not good enough, 
but most of the time I'm inspired by them and I really want to achieve more. Therefore, I feel like I can work harder and get things done. So listening to, watching, absorbing, I guess, inspiring content really helps motivate you to kind of act better on your to-do list. Of course, we all want to be working harder, hence why we're looking at ways to remain focused and stay motivated. But of course, we need to take time to take care of ourselves. That is why I slot in time at the weekends to make sure that I don't work. I take the days off. Because I'm living with my boyfriend, it's really nice to really make sure that we're scheduling time for each other and spending time doing something we want to, like watching a film or having a couple of drinks and ordering in a pizza. Small things like that, that maybe you would have normally gone out to the pub with your mates or you would have gone to the cinema or something like that. Just think of those things you would have normally done and try and schedule that in at some point. I use the weekends as like a break point because it resets me for the next week. Having those two days off or as close to two days off means that I'm kind of refreshed and rejuvenated, ready for a new week of working. This past weekend, I actually ran a bath for the first time in God knows how long. I used some little bath bombs. I really treated myself, face mask, nails, fake tan, hence why I'm a little bit glowy today. I really just wanted to make sure that I was taking full advantage of this self-care day and really reaping the reward of not doing anything or not doing anything related to uni work, if that makes sense. The more you use the time off as actual reward, the better you'll feel for it. And I think that it brings you back ready to work hard again. If you're constantly going 100 miles an hour trying to get everything done, you're gonna burn out. I have been there so many times and it's the worst. Once you're burnt out, you can't do anything and you're just worse off than what you would have been if you'd just taken two days off to rest. So please, for the love of God, all my friends watching this, <laughs> take a day off. I know it's stressful coming up to Handen and I know it's stressful feeling like we're not doing enough in this quarantine and that we're not working to our fullest capability, but please take care of yourselves. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's a weird feeling to be in. And that being said, my last point is be kind to yourself. It's hard feeling this burden of all this free time we now have if we're not working 24 seven. We would have normally had the constraints of the uni is open from this time to this time, or we'd be in work from this time to this time. And at the end of the day, you go home and you switch off, maybe. But now that those constraints aren't in place, it feels like we're just floating in space and like there's this abundance of time that we need to use in a very specific way. If we're not working all the time, we're wasting that time. And that's not how we should be thinking about this quarantine. We should be thinking of it as a chance to, yes, work hard where we can, but also take care of ourselves. Of course, you'll have people who aren't, you know, doing uni work right now and they're off work and they're just chilling and you can see it and you're just like, this isn't fair. I want to be doing that. Then you do it. You do that on your days off. But in the meantime, you also work hard and you work smart. Use those focus keeper methods. Don't be saying you're working, but you're actually flicking through Facebook and don't be saying you're, you know, going to work on that edit, but you're really just, you know, watching tutorials on how to do something that's unrelated. Use your time wisely. That's all I can say. <laughs> I know I have struggled so much with this quarantine in terms of learning how to switch off and I've only really started to nail it in the last two weeks. So if you're still struggling, please take on my advice and just give yourself a little bit of slack. It's not the worst thing in the world, okay? Taking time off makes you feel a lot better, believe me. I think that's everything I wanted to say, but I did actually ask on Instagram if any of you guys had any tips on how to stay motivated slash focused. I like to hear what you guys have to say. So if you don't follow me on Instagram and you want to take part in future videos, do follow me on Instagram, because sometimes I do Q and A's. <laughs> So I'm just gonna read out a couple of your suggestions. Ellie said, take lots of breaks. <laughs> yes, lots of breaks are essential. Every 25 minutes, take a five minute break, it works. She also said, write a huge to-do list and give yourself a pat on the back when you do a tiny thing. Also very true. Dami said, I watch your vlogs. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate it, I'm glad it inspires. <laughs> Becca has said this in two parts, so this will be interesting for me to animate, I'm sorry. She said, the thought of going back to work is keeping me going because I know I won't have time for anything once I go back. Use that as a motivator for yourself if you know that one day you're gonna have to go back to work. 
but in the meantime at least you're still getting paid and you can do all this extra stuff it's a great motivator to use it in that sense i have the needle studio said coffee all the coffees i agree that being said I'm going to enjoy my very melted starbucks now coffee is essential for me to get any work done but yeah i genuinely use those five minute breaks um every 25 minutes to make myself a new coffee so my coffee intake has gone up ridiculously during this quarantine Orange Aid says, getting some awesome playlists going whilst working helps a great deal. I agree with this so much. I blast my music through my earphones and I, I do some crazy dancing, but it gets the work done. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys took away some tips and tricks for staying motivated and focused during this time. It is a very hard time and I do want you guys to take care of yourselves. So please do so. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video, it means the world to me. I make videos like this, just a generic de design related topic every Wednesday, and I upload my weekly vlogs on a Saturday. So if that's something you're interested in, please do subscribe and hit that bell notification button so that you know, you know when I'm uploading. <laughs> if you like the video, give it a like, and if you want to know more, or if you have your own tips and tricks about how to stay motivated and focused, leave them down in the comments section below. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you all on Saturday with my weekly vlog. Bye guys! Yo, I need to fucking pose for a thumbnail now. What's a thumbnail for staying motivated? And my coffee. Oh god, there's so many things to hold in this one shot. <laughs> one of those is going to be the thumbnail i have no idea i feel like all the thumbnail angles are the same but that's okay right we're done we are done we are done